Hello all, welcome to the Reconnaissance for Red Blue Team course on Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we'll continue with looking at memcache servers and see how we can apply an authentication based dictionary attack. So till now we've interacted with the memcache server and there was no authentication. And truth be told that is actually the most common configuration because ideally memcache servers are supposed to be internal to most networks. They're supposed to be in a private, well-protected network, right? Now, why? Well, keep, keep something in mind that if you'd like to access objects stored in memcache very, very fast, then any form of overhead, whether it is encryption or authentication, uh, you know, on a per request basis or otherwise, is actually a huge hassle and slows down cache access. So really the idea is, you know, you pretty much want to store stuff in the cache very fast and recover it very fast. And that is why generally authentication is not applied. Now, if you would want to, and again, this authentication is meant for internal networks because it doesn't really protect uh, the data in transit, then you can use something called SASL with the memcached server. Now, SASL stands for Simple Authentication and Security Layer. And really think of it as a vessel in which you can go ahead and plug in different authentication schemas. Now, the important thing to note is memcache with SASL will only work if the server is running in binary mode and not the text protocol mode. Of course, against any form of authentication, especially the one which uses username and password, which is the most common way we use SASL with memcached, dictionary attacks can be applied. And that's pretty much what we're going to try out next. So let's jump right into the lab. Now, this is uh, basically the next lab in the memcache series. So if we go to recon, we open up memcache. So till now, what we've been doing is the memcached recon basics. Now we are going to do the memcached recon brute forcing. Uh, ideally, this should have been dictionary attack, but, but that's fine for now. Uh, we'll correct it. So in this challenge, we use a dictionary attack on the memcached server, right? Now it already says that the password of the memcached, uh, find the password of the memcached user student. So we know the user name. And of course, you know, when you do a dictionary attack, the assumption is if you want to succeed, this is probably there in some kind of a word list. So let's assume that this is a vulnerable server using a password from a dictionary for one of its users. And this is the location of the word list. So let's copy this. And let's open up the lab. So if we look at our IP addresses. This is the 192.117.95 IP address range. The next IP address is the memcache server as defined in the challenge uh, details. So I'm just going to give it the memcache server port number just to make things a bit more faster, right? Now what would end up happening is if you have a memcache server protected by SASL, uh, which requires a username and password, then unfortunately you would actually find that Nmap of course cannot do any form of service fingerprinting because memcache servers do not have a banner or something like a web server, which you can just grab and actually figure out what is running there, right? For the most part. Uh, so if you notice the Nmap scan is actually taking a reasonable amount of time. Right, it's probably trying different things. We know for sure that the port is running. You can figure this out by opening up a new terminal, I'm doing a very quick nmap dash n dash p, and then putting in the IP address. So we can clearly see that the memcache port is open. Right, great. Uh, because this is going to take some time, it'll eventually time out, throw you whatever you know exchange it has had with the server and will tell you that if you know about it, then you can submit it for fingerprinting. 
Now, maybe with the binary protocol, uh, you know, with all the binary exchange converted into hex, there could be a signature which Nmap can then, you know, use predictably and actually say that this is a protected memcache server. So that is something I leave to you as an exercise. You can, you can see this here, right? So the important thing to note is if you know for sure that this is a memcache server or it is running in a suspected port and you do a scan and you don't get version, there's a very high likelihood this is a server protected with SASL, okay? Now, as I said, the most uh, common SASL which is actually used with memcache servers is going to be a username and a password based authentication schema. So what we've done is, uh, we've actually created a very simple brute force script. This was created by one of our team members, Jeswin. And we actually go to the script directory. There we go. So I want to go inside the directory. And let's look at the script. Okay. So if you notice, this is a very simple while loop. And what it does is it's going to read the dictionary file and basically go through, you know, each word in the dictionary and then try the memc stat command to go ahead and look at the statistics of the server with different combinations of usernames and password, which have been fed in, right? So let's go ahead and get the dictionary first. I'm going to copy the dictionary out. So what was the location again? So let's copy the dictionary to the current directory. Let's go ahead and deflate it. Okay. And now you have the raw queue, you know, kind of dictionary right here. So now let's go ahead and run this script created by Jeswin. Mm -hmm. So the very first input is server IP. So we can pick that up from here. Followed by the username. Now in the challenge, we kind of made it a little bit simple rather than you having to iterate both through the username and the password, we made it simple. The username is student, so followed by the dictionary file name is what is going to come in as input. So let's go ahead and feed that in. And there you go. Seems like an incredibly difficult password QWERTY, right? Now. Once you've found the password, of course, you can run any of the memc commands or you can use the Python API and do a gazillion things in there, right? So in our case, let's actually go ahead and probably run the whole memc start command. So let's make our life easy. There we go. So this is the server IP address. You know the username is student. Password is QWERTY. And if you notice, now we are able to dump all the statistics on the memcache server, right? Similarly, if you wanted, you could go ahead and fetch the values of different keys. If you remember, this was done with memc cat. So one of the keys, if you remember, which was there on the server is flag. There you go. That's the value of flag, right? So this is how you can deal with uh, servers protected via authentication, right? Fantastic. So again, we have screenshots. So this is all I had in mind for this video. If you're enjoying this series, please recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.